He <laughs> made a whole song with an orchestra. <laughs> and it was <laughs> like, fire. Yo, like, played play the heck out of the piano. Like, he set the whole thing up at the beginning with this long, drawn-out speech or whatever. That he did all of that to be... That's the most petty thing I've ever seen anybody do. Welcome back to D and Dre Reacts. What's going on? Um, we're finally getting back into some Tim Mention, bro. Whew. Yeah, man. You ready for this? I am good, man. Okay. I know a lot of people in the <laughs> comment section don't think I'm good because right. of my reaction to that last one we did. But, yeah. uh, no, seriously, like, uh, um, the, the way he used uh, such a sensitive thing yeah. to highlight something, such a sensitive thing was very creative, and I give him all props for that um, in the last video. Um, and I'm really interested to see what else he has to offer me. Yeah. I think he's a genius, obviously. Um, and let's uh, get into this one. It's called Thank You God, I think, right? Oh gosh, we talk about religion now? I, I don't, I <laughs> okay. mean, ain't no telling. I mean, we gonna find out. You know how to phrase talk about it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm procrastinating. Look, uh, there's just something I, I kind of need to address and I should do it. I know I should do it now. Um, that, I, 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 it, over the years I've realized that, um, uh, so a lot of my audience has come to my shows, uh, particularly because of a, uh, um, uh, sometimes because I quite often sing about beliefs. Um, specifically, in the past, I've sung a lot about uh, faith and religion. And uh, if I'm completely honest with you, I've um, tended to mock, mock uh, some of the not in general, but some of the more the my perceived hypocrisies. Uh, <laughs> But I just don't want anyone to be waiting for that because I'm not doing it anymore. Um, well, well, I know, I know it's hard. Look, I should, I, you just, you, you've earned an explanation, you're right. Um, it's some, something happened to me, you see, uh, when I was touring my last show in Australia. It was the begin, beginning of last year. And um, I was doing a gig, not, not one of my gigs, it was a, a sort of, it was actually a new material night uh, hosted by the, uh, Ross Noble, you know, the, the long-haired, mentally ill northerner. And um, <laughs> he's, not, he's not, obviously, he's a genius, um, which is a mentally ill person with an audience. Um, <laughs> he's so. a beautiful, he's the, the uh, you know Ross, he's the best. And, and he, he does this amazing gig and we were having a drink afterwards and it was a really nice vibe in the bar. But I noticed this dude who slightly uncomfortably was hovering sort of uh, on the periphery of our group. And I noticed in particular this tall, really handsome guy had those nice dreadlocks that you can get for about 600 quid at the hairdresser. And he had a shirt open to about here and it's very tanned. But I noticed in particularly because he had a, 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 a long silver chain and hanging on the end of the chain, a quite prominent silver cross. You know, the sort of cross you might wear if you're a fan of intersections. <laughs> or, or, or the lowercase letter T. <clears throat> or, or probably most commonly if you're a fan of the apparatus by which first century Romans put to death and tortured Jewish insurgents. And uh, anyway, he was sort of standing there and um, eventually he, he, made, he, he made the move and he came over. It's lovely, polite. I said, hi, g'day, I'm Sam. Uh, He's his a great name story Sam. Time. He said, I'm from Dandenong. He was from uh, Dandenong, which is the suburb of Dandenong set in the Dandenong Ranges, just, just to the southeast of Melbourne. And uh, we got talking, but I could tell he wanted to talk to me and eventually he managed to kind of, you know, isolate me from the pack. And he said, Tim, I've always wanted to talk to you because I'm, I'm a fan of your work and I don't want you to think I'm offended or anything, but as you might have noticed, I'm a Christian. Christian. Uh, and he said, I've just, I've always wanted to ask you why. Why you don't believe in God. And I said, well, Sam, I don't believe in God for the same reason that anyone that doesn't believe in a thing doesn't believe in it because I haven't yet been offered enough evidence to allay my doubts. And he said, but you don't just go through your whole life only believing things for which you have evidence. <laughs> and I said, um, Well, that's pretty much how I stutter my way through my turgid existence, yeah. And he said, what about love? And I said, well, what about love, Sam? And he said, do you believe in love? And I said, yeah, I, I, I believe in love, I think. I, I love, I am loved, sure. And he said, aha, you don't have any evidence for love. And I said, mm, I think, I mean, I think, yeah, I've got evidence. Sure, I mean, love without evidence is... Stalking. 
good, yeah. I forget that he's a comedian. He is a comedian. He said, well, Ben, if it's evidence you want, how about this? And he told me this story, this incredible story about his mum. You see, Sam and his mother were members of a big evangelical church congregation in the Dandenongs, you know, one of those new glassy type ones. And um, in, in her early 60s, Sam's mum had um, gone to the doctor with a problem with her eye and she had diagnosed an irreversible um, degenerative eye disorder. And he told her that if she didn't get surgery very quickly that she would lose her eyesight. And Sam's mum was afraid. She didn't believe in modern medicine. She didn't trust doctors. She, she, was, she was afraid of hospitals and the idea of surgery. But Sam and his mum went to this, this church, this incredible church, and that Sunday, the entire congregation of their church, some 1,700 people, prayed at the same time for Sam's mum. And the following Tuesday, they went back to the doctor and there was no sign that there'd ever been anything wrong with her eyes. She was healed, she was cured. And the reason this story had an impact on me is because I try, I try to be intellectually honest with others and with myself and all I've ever asked for is evidence. And here I was witnessing a first-person account of what can only be described as a miracle. So I went home and I wrote this song. It's a big setup. I have an apology to make. I'm afraid I've made a big mistake. I turned my face away from you, Lord. I was too blind to see the light I was too meek to feel your mind I closed my eyes, I couldn't see the truth, Lord But then like Saul on the Damascus road Okay, gospel, he could play He sent a messenger to me and so Now I've had the truth revealed to me Please forgive me all those things I said I'll no longer betray you, Lord I will pray to you instead And I will say thank you, thank you Thank you, God Thank you, thank you Thank you, God All right Where are you at right now? I'm waiting for the other foot to drop. Okay, okay. Yeah. But All right. I think he sucked some people in. He got the gospel chorus. He playing that piano. Yeah, he playing the piano for sure. And it sounds like, oh, this man done turned his life around. He believing in, you know, whatever. And it seems like, okay, well, I guess we're going to do this song. But I just feel like the other shoe is about to drop. And his body be like, whoa, because he's comedian. And this is what he does. He sets yep. people up to tell a bigger message, yep. right? Is that how you feel? I feel exactly the same. All right, Tim. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, with that, I mean, that with that framework though, um, that does give us a different like perspective into this this uh, this whole thing. Because if you're watching from a different perspective, you're like, oh, look at him, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Um, <laughs> well, what if it is just genuine and pure? Then that's right cool now? too. Is it? It's cool. No, too. it's cool. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like a jerk, kind of. I don't. <laughs> no, nope. no. Nope. I've been conditioned. Nah. Yeah, yeah, we have. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for fixing the cataracts of Sam's mom. I had no idea, but it's suddenly so clear. Now I feel such a cynic. How could I have been so dumb? Thank you for displaying how praying works. A particular prayer in a particular church. Thank you, Sam, for the chance to acknowledge this omnipotent ophthalmologist. Thank you, God, for fixing the cataracts of Sam's mom. I didn't realize that it was so simple But you've shown a great example of just how it can be done You only need to pray in a particular spot To a particular version of a particular God And if you pull that off without a hitch He will fix one eye of one middle class white bitch I know in the past my outlook has been limited I couldn't see examples of where life had been definitive But I can admit it when the evidence is clear As clear as Sam's mom's new cornea And that's extremely clear Thank you, God, for so real quick before we move on, <laughs> I gotta give him a shout out for rhyming optometrist. <laughs> like what? Okay. It was, was good. Clean. It was. Yeah. It was clean. Even though he said it with his it was funny. Australian accent. Yeah, that was really. It good. was funny how he, you know, 
how, how, he, how he played it. Of course the shoe dropped. Of course it did. Um, yeah, that's exactly how he's going to respond to that guy coming up to him at a party and telling him, you know, about his God and everything like that. He's going to look, oh, man, that's... That's great. He's yeah. gonna hit it with just sarcasm, and that's what he's gonna. That's how he's gonna deliver it. So, how do you feel about his approach, his angle to this right now? Uh, is it is it necessary for him to say? Because, okay, so this is where I'm at with it. I understand where he's coming from. He's saying you have to put much saying what this guy's saying based off of the way he lives in life. What he believes is this is the way. This is the only way. And if you pray like this and live like this, then God will answer your prayer. Okay, so this is that guy's experience. Let him be great. Is it necessary, or, or is is Tim just upset about something that happened to him in his past that he feels like he has to even put this message out there? That's a good question, because I think uh, and that, no judgment. No, no, no. That, you know? It's still a good question. I mean, I think that a lot of times we look at, um, you know, this whole religious conversation um, from a lens of a person who's been in the, who's been in it, and they feel like, well, this is something that's important to me, and maybe that person who's there is like, to be left, hey, man, that's what's good for you cool do that and maybe that's the way to handle it but for tim he can't make such a big issue so simple probably right and he maybe feels like people who oversimplify this relationship with his higher being as if just oh that's just it it's just like hold on my brain can't really do that like, i can't just let that be that you know what i mean so that conversation needs to be i think you know talked about with more respect i don't think it's wrong to feel how you feel about anything you know, and, you know, but I think that his approach to this is coming from his angle of like, look, you guys are making this thing that's supposedly the biggest thing in the world. The so simple thing. Like, I don't believe. Come on. Like, let's let's stop. And, you know, I think that's the angle he's probably looking at it from. OK. He's an atheist, so, or, I mean, yeah. I have to admit yeah. that in the past I have been skeptical, but Sam described this miracle and I am ever calm. How fitting that the sighting of a sight based intervention should open my eyes to this exciting new dimension. It's like someone put an eye chart up in front of me, and the top five letters say I C G O D. Uh. Thank you, Sam, for showing how my point of view has been so flawed. I assume there was no God at all, but now I see that cynical and simply that his interests aren't particularly broad. He's largely undiverted by the starving masses, or the inequality between the various classes. He gives out strictly limited passes, redeemable for surgery or two for one glasses. I feel so shocking for historically mocking you. Your interests are clearly confined to the ocular. I bet given the chance, you just chew the divine and start a little business selling contacts online. Fuck me, Sam, what are the odds that of history's endless parade of gods That the god who just happened to be taught to believe in is the actual god And he digs on healing, but not the AIDS-ridden African nations Nor the victims of the plague, nor the flat adult Asians But healthy, privately insured Australians With common and curable lens degeneration The story of Sam's is but a single explanation what you thinking, man? So that's what I'm saying. So I think what you said is is pretty close to being spot on. Obviously, he feels some type of way about this guy that his this guy is talking about, yeah. and and he just like I can't get with you on that. I that can't be all that at all all that it is to it, and he can't be who you describe him to be because why would he help this middle aged white woman with her cataracts? which is not that big of a deal. And the, you got nations dying of diseases yep. and plagues and stuff like that. He said, so I can't get with you and your God type of thing. That's so, he's, so that comes back to my point is, he's, he's bitter, maybe he's cynical. You, you know, maybe it was preached to him and pushed down his throat when he was young and then he saw the injustices in the world and kind of was like, nah, that's not it. It gotta be something else. Forget you and everybody else that thinks this way. Mm -hmm. You know, so I can't blame him for how he feels. I don't know his experiences. I don't know his life. Yeah, I think that, that for him, the, the thought that God cares about that small insignificant thing yeah. when you look at the grand scheme of things and it's like come on like okay like i i hear you but there's so much more to life than this this small our everyday stuff you know what i mean mm -hmm. which isn't necessarily a bad message to deliver to people who are in the church you know mm -hmm. um because a lot of times we only care about what we are, see in front of us and that's all that matters and like i don't think you can care about everything in the world i think it's really possible but i think sometimes it's okay to look outside yourself from time to time so i think i think the church does a good job of looking outside of themselves because you see how many missionaries we put out you see how much money we give and stuff like, and i say we because i am a part of the 
church. I believe I believe in that stuff, me personally. Um, but I think that we do do a lot. But I think the biggest indictment that we have against the church is that we misrepresent God, the God that we preach ourselves, and it makes everything else look blurred. Mm. So it don't matter that we go and feed nations and stuff when people are putting their hands in the same purse that we're supposed to be taking out to feed these other people. And if we do these little things that give us bad character flaws, then it just, it makes the whole bunch look bad, you know? I mean, I just, I, yeah. I and, think that's, and that's why, that's why I think Tim is a product of that. Right, right. Cause you know? I mean, people have looked at Seeing that. The, this whole thing as optics. Like we, you know, yes, we give money to everything around and, or, you know, whatever, but we don't take care of the communities that we have like near us and stuff like that. I'm not saying that mm-hmm. People do or don't do that, and I'm condemning certain churches for doing whatever they want to do. Whatever your mission statement is and what you want to do in life, that's you. I just feel like a lot of times when you watch people's reaction to to you and you don't see yourself the way they see you, it's hard for you to have the conversation with them. So mm-hmm. like if you if you see the church a certain way, yeah, then that's how you see the church. And whether you're on one side of it or the other side, it's hard to have a conversation if you're only looking at it from your side of it. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. a a double sided mirror and like a, a you know in, in a you know like somebody in an interrogation room or something like yeah, that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like you can't see what's on the other side. You only see yourself. Mm. And that's hard for you even to, to gain traction or really do anything um um you know worth life. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah that's no that's true. So, I get it, yeah. Um interesting take on this dude man. This dude is he, he's he's the voice he, of the he masses no, right he now. Don't, he gonna say what he thinks man. Yeah. And it's it's gonna cut. It's gonna hurt. But he doesn't care. How he turned this whole thing into a whole eye thing is just crazy. He's clever for sure. To, you know, somebody who's trying to get you to, you know, know Jesus. I mean, like, or God or whoever, you know. And I think that, like, you know, it, for me, like, if I wasn't, you know, was trying to, to you know, show somebody who Jesus was or tell somebody the stories that I read in the Bible that, um, that touched my heart or my soul or whatever, there's a way to go about it for me that is it's all about relationships and understanding or whatever and like I understand that perspective you know what I mean I understand people who don't care about religion um, um, and maybe they and sometimes we say they've, they've been hurt by church or whatever but sometimes they just they really are thinking of this thing all the way out the way he is like he's like yo like like you can't tell me that there's a God when I watch you live your life and how you I just I can't really get with that because I look at the rest of the world all the time and you know, he brought up a lot of different things about um, the, 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 some of the stories in the Bible we don't even talk about. Some of the, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and 
and because you know we don't want to see God that vengeance way or whatever in the Old Testament or whatever. But like, so he he brought up a lot of things that are problems that he's probably dealt with his entire life, and why he was watching people in the church and and his thought process along the way. And it's like, yo, there's no way that this guy could be there. I understand his whole his whole how he came to be to these conclusions. I guess uh, I just think that. You know, his way of going about it is the most petty thing I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. Ultra petty. Like, he made a whole song with an orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, fire. You know, like, the, play, play the heck out of the piano. Like, he, he said the whole thing up at the beginning with this long, drawn-out speech or whatever to, to kind of really tell you the story, to really set it up, to yeah. really draw you into Sam's mom and yeah. all that. I mean, like, he did all of that to be... That's the most petty thing I've ever seen anybody do. Yeah, he is the king of petty. What? There's one thing I do want to say, though, is on this whole topic, and I'm not going to be long-winded on this, no. but I believe that a lot of people are going to be surprised by who they see in heaven. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I think that people misrepresent who we call God because we only know bits and pieces, and we and, and I think when the parts that we don't know, we try to fill in the gaps mm. with things that we don't know. Mm. And that's not the best way to do anything at all. Like, yeah. if I don't know how to... Put this. If I don't have the instructions, like the, if I don't know how to put this engine together, or if I don't know how to make this particular dish, and I try to just figure out, figure out and wing it, it can make somebody sick. Yeah. Right. So stick to what you know. Uh, Sam's experience was his experience, and I can't be mad at Sam because right. he was telling his experience, and he wanted to share his experience. He wanted to share his love. He wanted to share his belief system. What helped him? He could have came up to him and say, "Hey, man, um, are you feeling sick?" Take a spoonful of this sea moss. It could have been sea moss, but whatever Sam believed in, that's what he believed in, and that right. was his that was his version of giving love and yeah. sharing love. So, yeah. so like, I think you have to recognize intention. I think that's the most important thing because everybody's not going to believe the same thing. Everybody's not going to think the same way. But I believe a lot more people be, will be able to give and receive love if they really try to decipher what the intention is, yeah. you know, and then just kind of go for that. And don't take everything so personal. And I know you might have had some past trauma and things like that, but try to understand that everybody don't mean bad, yeah. you know? So I, it's, it's a tough thing. It, it takes growth and maturity and, and uh, stuff like that. But yeah, I love this. I love the song that he put it together well. He orchestrated it well. The chorus, the whole, everything was fun and vibrant while he got across this very important message that he wanted to get across yeah. that a lot of people and a lot of people feel the same way so I can see that a lot of you guys really love his stuff and what he stands for and represents but uh, I watch more of his stuff he's clever I think, I think he's very smart and he's I in think, his own lane I, I think that he's definitely yeah. doing his own thing the thing that I like about this you know when I look at the like, how technically like good he is at playing the piano and singing I mean, he's really good at his art Yeah, like, he's really good at putting this stuff together so he's good at what he's doing mm -hmm. and he's got a message now whether you agree with the message is whatever you want to you know, whatever it has to be. The interesting part that I feel like I've, I've seen so far is we watched a couple different videos and the dialogue that has come off of those conversations, yeah. just, just the videos, is what I think is interesting. When you can create something that's so interesting that it creates dialogue between people and people have to discuss where they are and how they feel about certain things, you've done your job. You've, you've let the world see you know, where you stand and yeah. you created a, a world where we can actually communicate off camera you Absolutely. Know what I mean? and, and learn, you know, um, about ourselves and what we really think. So I think that's, that's really good. Really good. Um, Tim mentioned is definitely an interesting guy. Thank you guys for putting us on this guy. Um, I'll, I'm gonna keep watching. I'm, I'll, if I get too much more, if they're all like this, then you know what I mean. Like it's it's this this rap hole can go for a long time because <laughs> I'm sure this guy's gonna bring out discussions and stuff like that that yeah. I know we you know we probably need to. Uh, unpack, but we need to tackle um, for sure. And with that, we've done our job. Yep. We're back to another 10 minutes song. Yep. Send us some more. Keep checking us out. Look, uh, look at some of the other stuff that we had off also. And even the podcast, you can check us out on dandre.com on our webpage, or you can go to any social media platform at dandre talk to check out some of our more in depth, uh, rich conversations where we get a chance to really elaborate and try not to make a whole long video of these things. So, anyway, we love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Y'all stay strapped in. All right.